All right, we talked about sine graphs. Now it's cosine's turn. So let's think about that same pattern around the unit circle, but with a better marker. So this is the point 1, 0 at 0 radians. This is the point 0, 1 at pi over 2 radians. This is negative 1, 0 at pi radians. And this is 0, negative 1 at 3 pi over 2 radians. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. If you recall, the x term is now the cosine. So that's the cosine. That's the cosine, that's the cosine, and that's the cosine. So if every other one on the x-axis is a pi over 2 value, and every other one on the y-axis is a value of 1, if we start at 0 radians, cosine is going to have a value of 1. At pi over 2, cosine has a value of 0. At pi, cosine has a value of negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, cosine has a value of 0 again. So it looks a little different if all you do is start at 0 and move your way to 3 pi over 2. And I guess we got to go all the way to, to 2 pi to complete the period. If we move backwards, just one unit value. So, it, and it's kind of like this. It's kind of like saying, go backwards pi over 2, cosine 0 again. If we ignore that part, it's basically sine's identical twin just shifted pi over 2 to the left. So sine and cosine are the same thing, basically. They're just, one's constantly behind the other. One's constantly lagging behind. So, so that's the basic of what cosine does. It just starts at a different place than sine does. So we've got our generic one cosine of x term looking right at us. Now the questions before us are, how do you graph 2 cosine of x plus pi where they're in grouping symbols right here? What does this mean? Well, if you'll recall, shifts happen inside the parentheses of pretty much every function that's out there. The grouping symbols oftentimes will manage the horizontal shifting. This means left pi units. This means I've got a new amplitude of 2, which means it's going to go the distance between 0 and its peak is going to be 2. The difference between 0 and its valley is also going to be 2. So cosine, I'll do it in green marker, this first one. Instead of starting at 0, 1, it would start at 0, 2, because that's what its amplitude value is, and then shift left to, uh, well, I guess left pi is kind of like left two of these increments here. So pi is 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks. So it's going to be up to 2, left 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks. That's, that's pi units on the, I mean, it's kind of arbitrary. It's the graph that I made is four blocks. A graph somebody else makes could be completely different. So these points are essentially saying that's our starting point. Now, what does cosine do naturally? It goes down to the zero. So this one is going to go down to zero for the next graphing interval. All right, and you could also think of it like this. It's 2 times 0, sort of the amplitude times 2, and then we shift it left 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks, and that's where it is. 
So multiply that by two, it's gonna move down here. You shift that left pi units. And here's the thing, once you start to get a feel for it, you don't really need to do this thing where you say, multiply by two, shift left pi units. It's kind of like, I've established the pattern. And the curve looks like this. And once the, the pattern's established, you just keep rolling through it. It's like, okay, this one's coming down, and then it moves back up again moves up, comes down. I don't think you guys can see those. Well, maybe. Yeah, we're good. Back down again, moves back up. So this is cosine. Well, this is, hold on one second. This is 2 cosine of x plus pi, where x plus pi is in the grouping symbol. Let's try one where it's not inside the grouping symbol. What if it's just two cosine of x plus pi units? Well, what that means is that our graph is shifted up. It's sort of, it's shifted up pi instead of left pi. Okay, anytime you add something on the outside of the grouping symbols, it's usually a vertical shift. So one thing that we've done in the past is we've said, you know, where, where's the vertical shift that you have? It's all the way up at 1, 2, 3.14 ish. So what we've done in the past is we said, you can make you can make sort of like this new x axis and then say, we're centering on that as the x-axis now, and that's going to guide our points. What I mean by that is, I'm now going to pretend like the origin is right here. So here's my origin. If it's 2 cosine of x, I'm multiplying the distance from the origin to that by two. So it's sort of like, I'm gonna be two above this new line. I'm two above this new x-axis. So here's one unit, here's two units. I, this is the best I can do, guys. I, I should have anticipated this better. That's okay though, we're gonna keep rolling through it. I think of it like this. This is regular cosine, and this is following the same pattern. So cosine starts above and then goes to zero. This starts above and then goes to the zero that we created. And then it goes below. It goes below two units. So, so this, is, this is one unit, this is two units. Well, I guess each, each one is actually a half unit, so I gotta go down. Two, four blocks. So one, two, three, four. And then it comes back up to zero again. And then it goes back up to there again. And it goes back to zero again. And back down here again. Now, this one's particularly challenging because they gave us a vertical shift of pi. That was almost unfair, right? But, uh, but it really, it truly shows whether or not you know what you're talking about. So then this comes back down to zero over here. I'm just gonna roll with this. And that's what it looks like when you shift uh, vertically pi units, and you've got a uh, 
I guess you'd, you'd say you've got a, an amplitude of two, right? Okay. So this is the video for cosine. Let's just keep them separate as much as we can.